Hi, God bless and welcome everyone here to Talk Straight Bible. This is Elsie with you all here in this day. As always, giving God all the glory, the honor, and all the exaltation for he alone deserves it. In this day, I'm going to be reading from the book of John chapter 14 verse 6. And the word of God says, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I want to bring a message on this verse of scripture that has been tugging, tugging at my heart this past week so strongly. My boss shared a video with me of a man who was in prison in Pakistan and he had an encounter with Jesus in that prison cell. And after I'm done with this lesson, I'm going to share the video. Hopefully, I can share the video with you because I would love for you to watch it and and hear this man speak and his raw emotion as to what he experienced in that jail cell with Jesus and see how great and wonderful our God is and know that Jesus, he is the only way And that is the title of the message for today. Jesus is the only way. So here in John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus says that I am the way, the truth, and the life. And I want to go through this verse of scripture. I'm going to begin with the first words, I am. And if you've read the book of Exodus and know the story of Moses in Exodus chapter 3 verse 14, we see how God first introduces himself to Moses at the burning bush. And God says to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. And we know that God has many names. And if you go through them and you study them, his names You will learn God's character will be revealed through each and every one of his names, such as Elohim, Yahweh, Adonai, El Shaddai, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi. And there's just so many more of God's names to study. And here when he says, I am, he is the self-sufficient, self-sustaining God who was, who is, And who will be. And there are a number of times when you read in the book of John where Jesus also says, I am. And I want to read some of those passages of scriptures to you. In John chapter 6, verse 35, Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. John chapter 8, verse 12. He says, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. In John chapter 10, verse 9, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. In John chapter 10, verse 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. In John chapter 11, verse 25, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. Jesus is the only way. He is the source of our salvation. And without him, we are nothing. And I have a lot of scripture that God gave me. So bear with me because the Lord was just leading me and directing me and pouring into me and I was like Lord this is a lot but I want to give you what God has given me in Acts chapter 4 verse 12 it says nor is there salvation in any other for there is no other name on the heaven given among men by which we must be saved not Buddha not Allah not Mohammed None of these can save. Psalms 115 describes these false gods. Verses 4 to 8, it says, Their idols are silver and gold, the work of man's hands. They have mouths, but do not speak. Eyes they have, but they do not see. They have ears, but do not hear. Noses they have, but do not smell. They have hands, 
but they do not handle, feet they have, but they do not walk, nor do they mutter through their throat. Those who make them are like them. So is everyone who trusts in them. These false gods, they never fed 5,000 of multitudes of people with five loaves of bread and two fishes. You never heard of them healing the sick and causing the blind to see, the lame to walk. You haven't heard them raise anybody from the dead or be crucified for the sins of humanity because they cannot save, they have no power. And as Psalms 115 from verses 4 to 8 describes them, they are absolutely powerless. You know, when you read the verse before Psalms 115.3, it says, but our God is in heaven. He does whatever he pleases. Jehovah Shammah, he is everywhere. He is the opposite of these false gods. He is the truth. He is the living God. He cannot be broken. He cannot be shaken. He cannot be moved. He cannot be altered by man. He cannot be crazy glued back together. Once these idols and these images and these false gods break, you got to go and buy a new one. You got to replace it. Our God is cannot be replaced. The Bible says in Malachi chapter 3 verse 6, for I am the Lord, I do not change. And Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is the same with us. Once Jesus <clears throat> assumed the role of high priest through his full experience of suffering, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obeyed him. And this is said and written in the book of Hebrews, chapter 5, verse 9. It says, And having been perfected, he became the author of eternal salvation to all who obeyed him. Jesus has called us to follow him, to walk through the narrow path, because any other path is going to lead us into destruction. The narrow path will lead us to freedom, but not everyone will walk down that narrow path and follow Jesus. Keep in mind what Matthew seven twenty one says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my father in heaven. And Matthew seven thirteen, uh, chapter 7, verses 13 to 14 says, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it, because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. But those, but those who decide to follow Jesus, like you, like me, those who decide to follow Jesus, come into an understanding of knowing he is truth and we learn from his word and we live as if he's walking right beside us because this is God's purpose for us that we be transformed, conformed by Christ is image in us because the benefits of walking with Jesus is getting to know him is having peace with God finding rest in his presence being free because who the son says free is free indeed you become a living breathing walking tabernacle where the presence of God resides and you become also a walking testimony of his glory his grace and his mercy hallelujah in second corinthians chapter 4 verse 17 it says for our light of affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Hallelujah to that. 
because the glory belongs to God, but he wants to share it with us. That's why it's important to be a light in the midst of darkness, to be a light in this world and follow Jesus because he is the only way that will lead us into that narrow path that will take us before our heavenly father. So I wanted to leave you with a testimony and then I'm going to have a video played for you and I hope you can stay to watch it. It's, it's a three minute video, but it's powerful. This scripture was tugging at my heart all week and I finally understood why. <laughs> um, sometimes things don't come to you at that moment, but then God shows you the purpose of why he constantly bothers you with certain verse of scripture and so I have a co-worker who's been working with me now for about a year and she's she was and I say that very clearly she was Catholic and when she first started working with me I never once shared with her that I served the Lord that I go to church never but she constantly kept saying, there's something different about you. There's something different. So as time went by and months passed, finally, she asked me, do you serve God? Do you go to church? And once she said it, it was like this light just shine. And I began to tell her my testimony and share with her where God took me out of and where I'm at now and how God is working in me. And so over the course of time, I invited her to an event that the church I attend we were having and she came and she was so impacted and she felt the presence of God and she was moved by the presence of the Holy Spirit and she just felt she needed change. And so this past week, as this scripture was tugging at my heart because the Lord kept on speaking to me about it, it was for her. And so this week, I asked her, have you given your life to the Lord? And she said, no, not really. She didn't quite understand. So I started to explain to her what it meant to give your life to the Lord and the importance of following Jesus. And she gave her life to the Lord this week, and I rejoice because when you follow Christ and you know he is the only way and God uses who he wants to, to bring others, to share in his glory, to be filled with his presence, to have encounters and experience and know that he is the only way that can lead you out. It is a blessing to be a part of this beautiful, wonderful walk, this journey, this ministry, everything that God is doing and how God uses us when we are just still. So I give God thanks that I know that Jesus is the only way. He's the only way. So I want to leave you with this video. I hope it can go forward and that you are blessed by it and you share it with someone else. You know, you know, you have no idea. Sometimes people say, I go to church and I serve the Lord. And sometimes they may be in the wrong place or they may be serving the wrong God. And when you shed light in the midst of darkness, you are revealing to them the glory of who God is. So I pray you are blessed. Have a great week until we meet again. Shalom. After a two-year stint in Pakistan, Javid was arrested in Malaysia for carrying illegal passports. He was thrown into prison. There, he had a strange encounter. And I would just uh, meditate in the verses of, of Quran. And once, as I was doing that, I felt just a fear, just feeling my heart, and I felt literally a uh, presence of a spirit. Uh, this, this spirit immediately made me feel like my life is in danger. I knew in my heart uh, what we call shayateen, uh, satanic, demonic spirits. So I started rebuking it in the name of Allah 
and I just cried out in Farsi, my own native language, said, God, help me. And the moment I said that, as clear as you hear my voice, I heard a voice. And that voice said, bring the name of Jesus. And the words that came out of my mouth sounded without thinking, Jesus, if you are true, show me yourself. And before I was finished with the sentence, that spirit had ran away. And that, uh, that is how my story basically began. That is not my story of conversion, but that's the beginning of my confusion. He had another strange encounter in his cell. And then I felt the whole room filled with the holy presence of God. It is as if time stops. You know things about God without him ever saying anything to you. The first thing I knew about him was his holiness. I knew he's a holy God. And um, I knew that he's just. And I knew immediately that uh, simultaneously these things are going through my mind and my heart. And I knew I'm unholy. This is in spite of all the good things I've done in my life. I knew that I have sins in my life, and I knew that uh, he's just and he must judge me, and because of his justice, I deserve death. At that moment, I felt a touch on my left shoulder and a voice that says, I forgive you. And uh, I didn't understand. I did not understand. Uh, what, how could that be possible? Because, because I had heard Allah is forgiving and merciful, but we cannot know his forgiveness till the day of judgment. So I said, who are you that forgives me? And I feel forgiven today. And he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I did not understand what that means because I had never heard those words. So I said, what is your name? And he said, Jesus Christ, the living God. I fell onto the floor and I just wept. He told his fellow prisoners what happened. Some shunned him, others followed him to faith. 